Will there be more chaos or a more breakthrough in 2024? Joseph Z shares what you need to know so you can be prepared for what lies ahead. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. you a question. Are you ready for what's ahead in 2024? And what is the Lord revealing to the body of Christ? And how should the church prepare? Well, today, with the help of our special guest, you're going to find out the answers to these important questions. And I'm going to introduce the people that are joining me at the table. First off, Cindy Johnston, how are you? Hey, I'm great. You want to know, does God reveal things to us early on? Does the Word tell us that? Yes, it does. Yeah. And what the Lord's spoken to me for this year is to simplify and back to a scripture that's very simple. It says that your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light to guide my path. And so yeah. that is a scripture I'm standing on Yeah, that I'll look to him. That's good. To Haviland Ford, how are you? I am good. You know, are I, you ready for 2024? I am. Everyone's saying more in 2024, and I'm saying less in 2024. That's why <laughs> I cut off my hair. Uh, but no, I it do looks think, good though. It you know, but in the spirit realm, more. Yeah, I do in the spirit realm, but I do feel like it's a time to declutter, to, to declutter. search our hearts, yeah. and get our get our house in order mm -hmm. for what's yeah, coming. For sure. I'm excited. Rachel Ann Brown, how are you? I'm good, and I always look forward to hearing from per different prophetic voices to see what the Lord has been speaking to them as yeah. far as the outlook. You know, for this next year, there's a lot going on. There's an, it's an election year. So it's just, it's always interesting to hear yeah. if the Lord has given them anything that we can glean from, learn from, receive yeah. for our own life. So that's good. And, you know, um, I try to bring guests that I really believe that God is using. And uh, I do believe that our guest today is a, a true prophetic voice that we can listen to. And Rebecca Lamb Weiss, that's important, isn't it? Who we showcase on here. Oh, absolutely. And this guest is great, you know, and I, I love that you are always sharing the platform and always finding new and amazing people. Yeah. And you've always had a love for the prophetic and you have <laughs> prophetic true. gifting yourself. Thank you. And so good job on stewarding your gifting and your platform. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm great, thank you. We always love to hear, you know, if God is speaking through an individual, not that we live our life by that. Mm -hmm. I mean, but usually it'll be a confirming mm -hmm. word that will resonate and you know it's the Ex Holy Spirit. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it's such a great opportunity for God to speak through people like that that prepare us. And yeah. we can see ahead like for 24, 25. Yeah. What is God expecting out of us and how do we prepare? That's good. That's good. Well, he is a prophetic voice for this generation and he's here to share what God's been showing him about 2024. 20, Please welcome our dear friend Joseph Z. Very good, man. Good like to be with you all song, today. Yes. Welcome back. Yes. Good to God have you back you at the table. Man, it is a prophetic spirit in this place, yes. giving testimony to Jesus. Amen. Yes. You know, what did we talk about last time you were here? Refresh my Boy, Wait, I remember one of the things okay. as we sat down. There was something about like 30, 60. Do you remember oh, that's what That's what it was. I remember 30, like, 60, as he said, was like, last time he was here, it was the Everybody da 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 da, -da. Down and then go Well, up. today, guys, that's right. today, guys, he's going to be using a board. To, to actually draw out. I love it. Are you a visual what, learner? What he yes. saw. I, like, I appreciate I like that as a fellow yeah. visual learner. Yeah. I'm totally visual as I well. Too. Maybe yeah. that's why we're in television. But anyway, <laughs> well, everywhere you turn today, we see concerning headlines. We see unruly protests, corruption, deception, and more taking our streets, our capitals, our schools, and even the world around us. But are we on the verge of a major shift? Well, today, Joseph Z is here to share what God has been revealing to him about 2024. Now, I don't want to get over into what you're going to share in a little bit on the board, but can you just talk a little bit about when God started speaking to you about 2024? Because here we are, folks. We're in 2024. Yes. I started hearing from uh, the voice of the Lord in 2020, Joni, about 2024. Wow. And the Lord opened up a window, said that there'd be a window in 22 and how things would begin to be shaped and formed. We get a preview of 24. Mm -hmm. 
And mm. 24 is something that I've carried in my spirit for quite some time. Mm. And I believe that we're in a valley of decision. We're coming into one now very powerfully. But I have a really strong sense about something, and I think this is great. And I, I so enjoy being at Table Talk because there's a prophetic anointing here. This is a house mm. of prophecy. Mm. And I want to thank you again, Joni, for that. You, I, I kind of, when people ask me, what's Joni Lamb like? I say, well, she's kind of like the prophet wrangler. She brings them all <laughs> in and <laughs> sorts them I out. I like that title. <laughs> I like that. That's accurate. So <laughs> the word I have is justice as well. Okay. That there'll be a sense of justice, but with that justice, mm -hmm. we realize that it'll be like the rain falling, right? We realize the rain falls and the just and the unjust mm -hmm. alike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in 1 Kings 18, this is so encouraging to me. In 1 Kings 18, Elijah's there and he's praying for rain. He's praying and praying and praying. And at the end of this prayer, suddenly he said, get up for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. Mm -hmm. And what happened? He girded up his, his robe and began to run ahead of Ahab. Mm -hmm. And here's the word in this. In this time of justice, we will outrun our enemies in the rain. Mm -hmm. The rain that falls on the just and the Ooh, unjust. There's gonna be a supernatural anointing to outrun our enemies in the rain. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's that's so amazing. Cool. I know one of the things you shared that I really felt would be important for you to hear, those of you that are listening, because some of you watching, you 2023 was tough for you. I mean, mm -hmm. some of you lost your job. Some of you lost a loved one. Some of you are struggling with something going on in your body uh, personally, um, and you just feel like you're in the middle of a storm and you don't see any way out of it. And yet you do love God, but you just, you're just you just about ready to faint. Well, that's why you're watching today because the Lord's saying, you know, be, be, don't be weary in well-doing and, mm -hmm. and don't faint mm -hmm. because there is an answer coming. And one of the things the Lord assured you about for people who have been tested. Yeah, that's right. This was a big thing. A I don't. Have you thing. ever had this before exactly no, like this? Okay, no. So share about that. The word that I got, Joni, was diamond seeds. You know, it's an interesting word, you know, mm -hmm. and I was praying and oftentimes on my broadcast. And this and, isn't about prosperity, by the way. No, it's, it's not. It's not prosperity gospel. No, it's not. But diamond seeds, it's yes. so profound. That's right. And it, yeah, it's sometimes those connotations jump in people's mind, but that's not what this is. I began to see um, people that had sowed in tears, mm -hmm. people that had paid the price when nobody was looking, how their character was through a difficult season, difficult times. Mm -hmm. I began to watch them press in and pass test after test mm -hmm. after test when nobody was applauding, nobody was there, uh, whether it was sickness, whether it was hardship, whether it was relational, whether it was financial. And the Lord began to speak to me and say, these are like seeds that go in the ground under great pressure and duress, but they will come back. Mm -hmm. Like if you put coal in the ground, mm -hmm. it'll come back as a diamond. And they're diamond seeds. And a lot of people, they'll lose that battle in what I call the seed war. They put that in the ground and then a war begins. Like they've made the right choice. They've had character. They pass the test, but then comes time and you fight the battle of time. And that's where the seed war is. Mm -hmm. And the Lord showed me though that this is the hour for many people who've had ease. They've had all these things. Now we're coming in the time where everything's going to be revealed and the diamonds will come out. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the people who paid it forward. You know, what came to me as you were talking is that there's someone watching that, um, you just you made the decision. It wasn't an easy decision, but you made the decision to plant seeds of forgiveness. Amen. And seeds of love and seeds, yes. seeds of mercy and seeds of grace. Although you had it within your hand to do harm, but you didn't. But you could have, but you didn't. That was that was a diamond seed that was planted. And you know, the, the word of God is true, and yet the and that the, the laws of reciprocity are true. Yes. And what you plant, yes. if you plant love, you're going to yeah. get love. Yes. You plant hatred, you're going to get hatred. You plant judgment, you're going to get judgment. You plant forgiveness, you're going to get forgiveness. How important is that it, in all of it's this? It's so vital. Our words have power. And I think a very wise person once said it this way, that whatever you say, just add the words after that. And that's how I want it to be. Mm. That's exactly how I want it mm. to be. So if you say life, you know something good about your children, your life, your future, or your own self, then add the words. And that's really how I want it. Yeah. Or negative, you know, positive. Yeah. That's how I want it to be. I believe if you do that, it'll check you and you start understanding where you're really at. But our, our, the tongue has life and death in it. Mm -hmm. And when, especially when you add some prophetic hot sauce to that, yeah. you add some juice to that, some voltage, you'll realize that then when you say things with emotion behind something, yeah. it projects yeah. it even further into the spirit yeah. and it'll come back unto you. Now, I know for 2024, you said that originally 
you you saw you you heard one word for 2024, mm -hmm. but as we were going into 2024, yes. the Lord said something different to it's you. It's true, Joni. So in the beginning of the, the the cycle, coming up to 2024, I heard the war, the roar, more, and I and those are still powerful, potent words. But right after New Year's Eve, you know, we were doing a New Year's scenario. Right after that, I was praying and I started to meditate, and I heard a door open. Like it opened to the year. And it went all the way around the year until the following New Year's. And then I heard the door close. Bam. Like it shut. And the Lord said that will be the valley of decision where America, specifically America, will either go the way of Nineveh or it'll go the way of fire. But either way, America will change. It'll either repent and repair or it'll bow to its knees through fire. Mm -hmm. But there will be a new America on the other side of it either way. For people watching and they don't know what happened to the city of Nineveh yes. in the Old Testament. Explain that. So Nineveh was a, a magnificent city. It was actually at the time one of the biggest, if not the biggest city. It was something like 18 miles across. It was just massive. It would be something like what Los Angeles would be. Huge. To America. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the walls were so high you could run three chariots around the top of it wide. Oh, uh, it, it was massive. And they were just people that didn't know their right hand from their left hand. And Jonah gets sent. And he was sent there. And he didn't want to go. We understand that. But Nineveh was a unrighteous this ungodly yeah. scenario yes. and yet the Lord still had mercy on them yes. and the word came said if you don't repent you're done in 40 days and it could have been by an outside force what what big event took place in America that touched the heart of God okay this is strong so in 2020 the spirit of the Lord came to me while I was on my live broadcast and I began to write on our whiteboard as I do and I saw these words and I actually had people Joni say you can't say that but I had the word of the Lord come to me, so I have a deal with the Holy Spirit. If I see it, I will say it if he tells me to, no matter what it looks like. So I wrote on the whiteboard, unprecedented ruling by the Supreme Court, Roe v. Wade will be overturned. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, the Lord said, say it, so I said it. Then we see back in uh, 22, around June of 22, that Roe v. Wade was overturned, and we prophesied politically it would be an earthquake. Then Brett Baer comes on the news and says, politically, this is an earthquake. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord spoke to me this coming year and said, as we just declared, that grace was upon us, but because we're coming into the time we're in and so many seeds are crying out of negativity also, that we've gone from a time of grace to a time of mercy because of Roe v. Wade being overturned, yeah. that there was a federal overturning of Roe v. Wade. And because of that, the Lord said, federally, I will hold this together with mercy. Mercy, we don't, the nation does not deserve That's it. True. But God has seen many people turning to him and saying, help us, Lord. Yes. People getting baptized, turning yes. to the Lord. He hears that. And I believe that we are salt and light preserving this place. You know, and I just want to say, because I really just felt it as we were talking, there's somebody watching and you've had an abortion. Right. And I want you to know that we are not condemning you, that Amen. God loves you. Mm -hmm. And um, for whatever reason you made that decision, um, that's between you and God. But we stand for life Amen. because... We believe that an eternal soul is created when a sperm and an egg come together. There's actually science that shows there's an a, a explosion mm -hmm. and a light that takes place. And, we, and of light. course, that eternal soul uh, will live forever. Mm -hmm. So um, for those of you that had an abortion, I want you to know that you have a child, uh, if you know the Lord, that you'll see in heaven. So don't beat yourself up on that. We love you. So good. God will forgive you. But we talk about this because life is so important to God. And that's why you believe that mercy was extended. I do. Because as a nation, that was overturned. And I think I've heard even recently up to 40, 50,000 babies have actually been saved as yes. a result of Roe v. Wade. Yes, and adoptions on the rise. Things are happening. Yes. So I'm so grateful. And we do love everybody regardless of what's happened. The Lord loves us. Um, but I see that. And you know, another spirit I see coming on the scene, and this is interesting. The Lord gave me this word, and I thought, what is this about? And the Spirit of the Lord said the word to me, Maccabees. The word Maccabees. Oh, cool. That there would be, yeah, the Maccabees stood up. And what happened is there's a man named Mattathias. Mm -hmm. uh, he was told by the, the nation that was invading and pushing uh, their ideals on them that you will do X, Y, and Z. He said, no, I won't. And then he stood up and actually acted out with action. Like he took life of people, did all the things. His son stood up in his stead after that. Judas the Hammer Maccabees. Wow. And he held off the onslaught of the enemy. He fought back and they said, no, you move. I'm not moving, you move. And everybody they sent against him, he'd defeat them until ultimately... Jerusalem was retaken. You have to share just quickly, because we're almost out of time, when we get to the board, but 
what you said in comparison to your dad, that he would not compromise what uh, in his ministry and life? What was the one thing that he said um, he was not, would never be ashamed of and would, would not compromise? It was so important to him. Uh, the person of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wow. never compromised, especially because they um, launched in Alabama, which was really kind of a little religious, mm -hmm. and there was pressure to not be so charismatic. You know, em embracing the person of the Holy Spirit, and he did not waver. Yeah. That well, whole the Lord time. told him, "If you will not be ashamed of the Holy Spirit, then I will grow this ministry and wow. and elevate you know this ministry." And so that was a promise. Thank that God he made. for His obedience. Yeah. 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 Thank you, yeah. Jesus. Amen. Well, we've been talking about what the Lord has shown Joseph for 2024, and one of the things He revealed was a month by month timetable for what we will be facing and how the church needs to intercede and pray. So Joseph is over at the board, and I'll need him to unpack that for us. Joseph, you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay, do it. Well, one of the things I want to say right as I get into this, too, just with everybody is, listen, the words that we prophesy never supersede. They never go beyond the Word of God. It's like the old saying goes, uh, gifting will take you to the top of the mountain, but character will keep you there. And the Word of God is the only way we right-size character and the only way we right-size prophecy. And uh, so what I'm about to share with you is, uh, is going to be revelatory but also make sure you're reading that Bible and keeping your heart and mind in that, okay? So let's take a look at this very briefly. One of the things I saw immediately uh, earlier on in the season previous to this was this. I saw the nation of the United States at 30, 60, 100-fold going down. I saw them on a downward trajectory. That's the nation we're in, of course. Then I saw it coming back at 30, 60, and 100-fold, and the Lord spoke to me it would be the new America, Okay, the new America was coming, but it didn't mean better necessarily, it just meant new. But when we're looking at this, I also saw this season we're coming into of a storm, a very serious storm that would come. And I believe this is where we are headed right now. I believe this is where we are. But we're seeing that this will also be the valley of decision. Mm. I believe this is where we're going. And from this storm, revival will come. I believe uh, reformers, there will be a reformation that takes place. And whether we uh, go in the right directions or not, we're going to see a new America either way we go here. But here's the thing I began to see at the beginning of this year. I was praying about this, and I began to see uh, this timeline. And I'll just do it like, like this. I saw January, of course. So I'm just going to write this out very quickly. February, we realize March, all the months of the year. Uh, April, May, I started to see things that the Lord was saying during this time. Then we saw uh, August. August. Thank you, ladies. That's <laughs> what we're here for. <laughs> and then December, of course. Now, when we're looking at this, I began to recognize that there was a lot taking place in the beginning of this year. We walked into it, and as, as we were talking about earlier, Joni, as we walked into the beginning of this year, I, I saw the war, the roar, and more, the Spirit of the Lord helping us during this time that more breakthrough would happen. But then I saw a door open. I saw the door begin to open. And I saw this, and it's like I heard it, saw it, and talked with our intercessors about it, and a door opened going into January. And I thought, that is good, unexpected. And I believe this door is that door of mercy, okay? This door of mercy going all the way around this time, then at this time again, a year out, I heard the door slam shut. Now, does that mean the end? Is it impending doom? That is not what I'm saying. But I sense the door slamming shut of the season of mercy, and we will be in a time of decision by here. What will we do as a nation? What will we do going forward? There's a lot coming with this. Now, during the same time frame, the watchword I heard was money, money, Money And when I mean money, 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 I'm not talking about, you know, prosperity gospel. I'm not talking about those kind of things. The watchword are people are going to be talking about the money. There's going to be a lot of serious events going on with the money and economy and all this. And this is going to be what many people start prophesying more about, talking about. And I saw this. But at the same time, in this window of time, I saw something happening here. And it was like a river that came to this time frame here, like a river. 
and actions that are being taken in quarter one are going to impact what's going to happen at this time frame here into the fall time. Now, I'm just going to share this with, uh, you know, with you to discern and consider, but for the last three years, I've been very concerned about the month of October, and every year I intercede heavily when we come into the month of October, and I believe we're coming into that season again where something very serious and monumental could be happening in this month. Now, I believe we can intercede because we know Matthew 24, for example, if we're going to be biblical, Mm-hmm. Matthew 24, Jesus said, there is impending things coming. But here's the good news, the silver lining. Mm-hmm. He, Jesus also said, pray that when these things come, it doesn't happen on the Sabbath or in the winter. Ooh, Two things. Yeah. Jesus said, pray. You know, you're watching at home. You're, all, you're watching with us right now. Remember this word, pray. You see these things and we pray. Mm-hmm. In other words, it's the great co-mission. It's not the great mission. God needs his body to operate with him. And if we pray, there's things that will eventually come in prophecy that we can't alter on a biblical level. But I do believe there's things that we see that if we pray, Jesus said, pray it doesn't happen on the Sabbath and pray it doesn't happen in the winter. What that tells me is we might be able to alter timelines and alter when certain things happen. But I see this and I believe we need to pray about October. Do you think that has to do with the election? I do. Yeah. I think it has to do with the election. I think the election is going to be a mess no matter who wins. I think it's going to be challenging no matter what happens beforehand, afterwards, all of it. I've seen two candidates and I believe this river here, Rachel, is is involved with um, a, I saw a character um, being placed here. It's like a, an individual that would show up more at this time frame than is even really out front here. Now, I have thoughts about this, but I don't have clarity, so I'm not going to try to speculate. But I saw a character coming. I saw 45 here and making a decision. And without the proper prayer, if we don't prayer cover this, uh, he, will not, uh, he will not make it in the natural. But I do believe there's going to be a miracle because, again, this, again, is covered by mercy. I see mercy over this whole time frame. So the mercy of God is in all of this. But I'm looking at this, and then I've been praying against these words too, a dark November. Um, And this is not for fear. Listen, we don't say these things to scare anybody. We say them to prepare. This is not to scare you. It's to prepare you. And we realize Acts chapter 11, Agabus said, hey, a famine's coming. And some people say, that's fear-based. No, it's not fear-based. The church rallied and met that need. They met the requirements, and they brought good change. Mm -hmm. I believe this is not the end. It's not over with, but we're going to see some radical things happening. There's many more things I could begin to go into, but this is a snapshot of what I saw. They're going to induce change here. They're making decisions now. Uh, I like to call the person that's in office right now the Manchurian candidate. Mm -hmm. I believe that the Manchurian candidate is uh, doing what he's doing, and he's got the Easter Bunny as a GPS system trying to figure out where he's at. But when we're looking at this, I believe that his day is already over, and if he's useful, they'll keep him going. If he's not useful... They'll make a great change. And so right now I see that we're, we got this time frame to pray and then we're going to start seeing change between the end of this month into this month, this window where they're already making decisions that'll be launched upon us at this time. Um, if he, the, the president, the former president, gets out of the legal fights that they're in, he's unbeatable and I think the last option they have is to take his life. But we have to pray. So Joseph, what about the great revival that everyone has talked about this coming that's going to be in the storm. Okay. I believe the great revival will be here. When we're talking great awakening, I believe that it's going to break out under pressure. And this is where the diamond seeds are that we talked about. Right. This is where those who sowed in tears will reap in songs of joy. The reformers will be birthed out of this. The Lord told me in 2015, I went to Trump Tower, and I'm not just all about a certain candidate, but the Lord sent me there. In 2015, I stood in Trump Tower, and the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. I said, God, am I here to announce who the next president's going to be? And the Lord said, I've not graced you to know that. Mm. I thought, oh, I thought I was going to be cool for a moment. (laughs) And then the Lord spoke to me and said, I've called you to pray for this man and pray for the land. I said, okay. I said, Lord, is America going to go down? Is America over with? And the Spirit of the Lord said to me very strongly, he said, no, America has one more round because the young lions are coming. Mm. And that's Generation Alpha. Alpha's coming. Generation Alpha, they're not going to be like some of the other people that have uh, played a patty cake with the way the world's run things. They're not going to get all caught up in the minutia of, of ignorance and ideologies that just make people weak. Generation Alpha is going to live up to its name. 
like uh, I'm thinking of your, your children, you guys. Mm -hmm. Generation Alpha, raw. They're going to be like, uh-uh, you move. Yeah. You move. Are they going to roar? What's that? Are they going to roar? They're going to roar. Well, they're going to say Mufasa, ooh, right? <laughs> and, and they're going to come through this, and it's going to be powerful. They will be the thing that induces the Reformation. Now, what America looks like during that time is a very challenging picture. But I believe the Reformation will come anyway. But we're not of kingdoms of man. Mm -hmm. We're of the kingdom of God. Right. Yeah. So yeah. what would you say come is on the back, mandate? Come on back yes, to the table, Joseph. I think okay. we're just about out of time. Go ahead, Cindy. What would you say is the mandate for the church then regarding 2024? The mandate for the church is uh, we have a mandate in our ministry that God gave me. And this word million is starting to pop up everywhere. And here's what I mean by this. We're called to raise up a million clear-eyed, clear-minded prophetic reformers to go win a billion because we want to make God rich. We want to make God rich with souls, mm -hmm. with the one thing. He, yes. What do you give somebody who has everything? Right. The one thing they don't have. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in God's case, it's his lost creation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I believe that we need to disciple, preach the gospel, uh, get as many people saved as we can. On that note, would you just take a moment, for those of you that are watching and you're saying, this is all very interesting, but I don't really know the Lord or have a relationship with him. I don't even know how to do that. We'd just like to uh, give you the opportunity to receive Jesus. That's really what we're all about. Amen. Because uh, just like Joseph said, the greatest thing that we can do in this life is lead someone to the saving knowledge of Christ because it, we're going to live forever and be beyond this life. This life is just a stepping stone to the life to come. It's eternity. And my question is, are you ready to meet the Lord? Would you just lead us and we'll pray after you? Yes, ma'am. Well, we just want to say this also. When we offer people Jesus, we are not offering you the plague. Mm -hmm. This is life and life more abundantly. Yes, it's yes. only forever. Okay. Praise God. Well, let me just say this. We just say out loud, Jesus, Jesus. I need you. I, need I you. repent of my way of doing things. I repent of my way of doing things. I give you my life. I, give you my life. I exchange my life for your life. I exchange my life for your Rescue, life. Me, Jesus. Rescue me, Jesus. I give myself to you. I give myself to you. And I believe because I've called on your name that I am saved. That I am saved. Thank, you Thank you for rescuing me. I'll serve you, Lord Jesus. I'll serve you, Lord Jesus. All my days. All my days. Amen. 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 The greatest Amen. prayer that you can pray and uh, so excited about what God has for you in the days ahead. Well, we are at a time. Hope you've been encouraged today. I want you to remember that even in the midst of chaos, trials, uncertainty, God's light shines the brightest. Yes. And if you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, then you can have everything you need to face the days ahead because the Holy Spirit is here upon the earth to lead and guide us into all truth. And uh, we can listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's part of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And he, His presence is on the earth. It's what drew you to watch the show. It's why you're still watching right now. That is the presence of God in your life. Well, if you're watching today and the enemy's trying to tell you that you need to be afraid or that, you know, uh, you're not going to make it, or you're not ready to meet the Lord. He's a liar. And uh, we Amen. would love to just pray with you, encourage you today. If you prayed that prayer, I'd love to send you a, a free book entitled Now What? And we have wonderful prayer partners that are standing by. Uh, because you have to understand, they love praying with you. We love praying with you. And it's important, I think, a lot of times when you pray that prayer to tell someone. So go to the phone right now and call if you prayed that prayer. Or if you have any prayer requests at all, that toll-free number is for you to call. We count it a privilege to pray for you. I do want to thank Joseph for joining us at the table. For more on this ministry, you can visit him online at josephz.com. And if today's Table Talk touched your life, make sure you let us know by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, X, and YouTube. I can't get used to saying X, by the way. No, no. I'm so I used can't to saying it either. Every time I say it, I'm like, that's so weird. But anyway, yeah. I can't wait to hear all that God's doing in your life. Thank you so much for watching. So excited about those of you that prayed. Be encouraged today. You don't have to be fearful. God is still on the throne. He's in control. And He is going to walk with us through whatever is ahead. So you be encouraged. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.